In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a Howling Banshee. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you the Elder Autark. However, you can actually use these techniques for any of the Howling Banshee models in the kit. If this is your first time on the channel and you just want to learn how to get your models painted and looking great on the table time in no time at all, then please consider subscribing and I'll see you on the other side. Let's get going with the Howling Banshee. So we're going to use the X-Arc. Uh, so I can show you how to paint a few different colours. The other Howling Banshees are a bit plainer in terms of their armour. So this has a prime of Wraithbow. And the first colour we're going to do is Screaming Skull. So we're just going to paint this all over the armour. I'm going to move quite quick across the model doing this. And a very similar colour. There's not too much... In terms of the shade differentiation, Screaming Skulls may be a little darker than Wraithbone. This gives us a nice base to work the armour from. So as I'm working this all across the armour panels here, one thing to bear in mind is that we'll do all the dark colours first. So even though I'm base coating the armour, we will do the dark colours first because that means we can go back and correct anything that we might need to before we come back and, and do the armour and we'll really finish off the armour last okay so I'm going to finish the rest of that in Screaming Skull we'll come back and we'll make a start on the darker colours once all the Screaming Skull is done you can see you've actually got a kind of darker bone all the way around it so the first dark colour we're going to do is the green part so we'll use Caliban green for this and this is all the ribbons that we've got coming away from the model here um, Caliban green is an interesting colour from the point of view that it, even though it's a base paint, doesn't really cover very well. So you're definitely going to need two coats of it, so prepare for it. Don't be tempted to throw it on in one big thick coat because that's just going to make a bit of a mess. So work your way around all the green bits. So you've got that bit there, you've obviously got the tabard coming here and you can just see there that it doesn't cover in one so it's going to take two to get that done so take your time work your way around the model get all these bits done with the Caliban green and then we'll come back in ready for the next dark colour which uh, we'll probably do the black next as this is the X arc as well don't forget that you've got the helmet to do so on the other Howling Banshee you won't have the dark green helmet but on the on the X arc you do so take your time work your way around that as well trying to get on your on the hair if you do like I've got a little spot in there then you can just tidy it back up with some wraith bone afterwards and uh, we'll see you back then once all the Caliban green's done. Two coats of Caliban green you've just about done that. Now as I'm moving around the model I can see that I've actually made some mistakes I've gone outside the lines and that's okay I could have just painted over those before I came back to this part of the video but actually I just want to show you that it's okay sometimes to do that and what I'll do rather than go and fix them every time I make a mistake is I'll get the rest of the dark colours done and then I'll go back in with Wraithbone and fix them so next up is the bad and black this is for all the black areas so we've got this holster here which we're going to do. Again, being as careful as you can, even though you can go and fix mistakes, uh, it's easy to, or easier when you haven't actually got any in the first place. So just take your time and work your way around. So as well as the holster on the back, we've got this little pocket here as well. Perhaps for keeping the lunch. Don't know we want to color it all in even though we've got that little uh, glyph on there because it'll just make it easier when we try to pick that out later we've also then got this bit of strap in which goes across the back and uh, comes away here i 
and we've got this strapping across the chest I'm trying to move this make sure the camera can focus for you to see and we've also got the handles of the swords so probably better looking at them from underneath just get them coloured in as well we leave the end because we'll probably do that gold so we're going to work our way around finish the rest of the black and we'll come back and we'll do the hair next with that black done it's time for hair so we've got the hair and we've got the bits around the sword handles as well so for this we're using blood angels red contrast paint and we're just going to work that on over the hair and you can see straight away the effect which I think is really really nice so it automatically kind of bases and shades this for you so just take your time be careful one thing I found with contrast paints is that Sometimes if you leave a little bit, it, oh, I made a mistake there, which I need to fix, uh, it can pull away and it'll leave you with a, a white mark. So just make sure you have got all the bits covered in the contrast. And don't forget you've got the bits attached to the sword there as well. Let's get those done. So we'll get that finished, we'll come back and we'll have a look at the gold next. Now that the red on the hair is dry, see it's turned out quite nicely. So we'll probably go back and highlight it later. But in the meantime, let's get some of the gold done. So it's Retribute Drama. And we've got the sword. It's the sword guard and then all the, the kind of workings around it. We've got the handle there. There's lots of fiddly bits with the gold, so again, take your time. We've got the icon in the middle of the chest here as well. And then all the way around the model, we've got these little clips, which kind of hold everything together. Don't worry too much about painting over the gems because we'll go back and we'll get all those sorted out before we finish them anyway. And we've also got those parts around the gems as well, so just want to make sure that we get those gold as well for the final highlight. So it'll really make the model pop. Okay, so work your way around the rest of the model. Take your time. Like with the sword, it's not too much of an issue because we'll probably to go for like a crystal type effect blade, so we'll be able to go back in and fix those bits later. So just paint over them for now. So work your way around, and then when we come back, we'll have a look at shading the gold. We'll shade all the gold with right on the flesh shade just to bring some of the the depth back to it. Um, and when you're doing this against the parts where the gold and the armour match up, try not to put it on too heavy around the armour because what we'll do is is once we finish this stage, we'll go in and we'll correct all the mistakes that we've made, if any. I know I've made a few, and I'm not just talking about my past relationships, I'm talking about the spillages onto uh, the parts of the model. So get the all the gold shaded with the right glove flesh shade, and we'll come back and we'll have a look at the corrections, and then we'll start to highlight this chap and, and really make him pop. So now it's time to go in and tidy up all the mistakes you've made if any, so I'm using wraith bone for this I'm just working my way around the armour 
fixing any areas where I've been a little bit overzealous, a little bit too keen with some of the colours. Um, so work your way around. What then I'll do, and I'll do it off camera, is there any bits that you cover with wraith bone, just go back in and give them a, a shot of the screaming skull back on top just to just to bring them all back up to the same sort of colour and then we'll move on and we'll start highlighting first highlight then we'll do the gold so we're going to use liberator gold for this and it's just quite nice and straightforward just want to catch all those leading edges you can in some places just draw it across the surface just to give it the desired effect it's nice and straightforward so work your way around the model doing all the gold bits with liberated gold and when you finish the Liberator Gold, we just want to give that gold a kind of extra pop. We're going to use Chrome from Vallejo Model Air. We just want to work this over some of those sharp edges that are going to catch most of the light. This will kind of just give you the effect of an extra shiny gold. Work your way around any way where you think that the model would benefit from this. It tends to be those top facing areas. And once you finish that, we'll uh, highlight the hair next. The hair highlight is Wild Rider Red. It's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, and all you're doing with this is you're just looking for the those strands of hair I'm just pulling them out just to give that front of the hair uh, an extra pop where you've got long solid strands you can as ever use the shape of the model just to get those highlights in. Just take your time and work your way around all the hair. Don't forget you've got this little bit here as well. And when it's dry we'll reassess and we may do another layer of highlight on it as well. So just work your way around and get that bit finished. And for the hair, I'm just going to give it a little bit of an extra highlight. So it's just a cadian flesh tone. And this is going to be done quite sparingly. Just very thin as well. So you need a good point on your brush. I use Winsor & Newton Series 7. Uh, there is a link to the ones I use in the description. So feel free to have a have a check because uh, any purchases you make through those links do actually really help me and support the channel it doesn't actually cost you any thing additional outside of what you're paying for the product so any support is always graciously received excuse my shameless plug so just work your way around just on the on the really sharp edges of the hair this will give you a nice highlight. I'll just maintain the kind of orangey feel to the red. So yeah, that's worked out really nicely. And next up we'll do is we'll highlight the green. The green highlights are going to be Warpstone Glow. And these are fairly hard highlights. So what we're going to do, I'll just kind of show you here on these, we're just going to edge highlight. So that's a fairly straightforward highlight there. So 
So all the ribbon parts you can work your way around and just use the warp stone glue to edge highlight. We're going to do the same on the helmet. So I'm just going to work that line up there. And don't worry about it being too thick because we're going to put a thinner highlight in there as well. But what this does, it'll just lighten the whole helmet itself. So any edge that you can find, just run your brush along it. So it's going to give you a sharper highlight. And then when it comes to the cloth here, so we can edge highlight down there. And we can edge highlight into there like that, easily enough. Where it gets a little more difficult is perhaps in these folds here. So what we're going to do, is going to work our paint over into the folds. And then where we can, you may have to play around a little bit with your model and the angle. But we're going to try as best we can to get that edge highlight onto this part as well. So just work your way around the model, figure out what's working best for you with that moment in time. And also the same here for this part, which is going to make sure we get the warp done in there. Okay, so I'm going to finish off the rest of the green and we'll come back and we'll give it a second highlight. Things are starting to take a bit of shape now. So we'll finish off the green highlighting with moot green. So it's quite a bright green, so we really just want to put this in the corners of things like the ribbons coming off the chap. Second time I've called him a chap, and no, I suppose he's not a chap, as he's howling banshees are female aspect warriors. So that's my my bad. Just want to put a little bit of a highlight on there as well. I'm not going all the way down, just in those the highest parts, which will catch that light. So just work away around the model. Any any sort of high parts of of green cloth. Just give them a little bit of that moot green. You can see it's really working out nicely. So I'm going to finish this and we'll come back and we'll do the black highlights next. So the green highlighting is done and now it's starting to really pop a little bit. Before we go and do the armour, I just want to take some Abaddon black and I just want to, all the gems on the model, I just want to paint them all black. And the reason I'm doing this is so that if I do accidentally slip when I'm doing the black, I won't actually slip onto the armor, which I'm going to finish on the next page. So, uh, sorry, the next stage. So just go around all the gems, paint them black, and then we'll get the armor sort started. A little bit ahead of myself, I do still need to do the black highlighting before we get the armor done. So this is Mechanica Standard Grey. Um, and again, we just want to make sure you're on the back here. Get that focus right. Just going to use the design on the model and just run the highlight down the edges there. So it's nice and easy. On the intern one there, and on the edge there. So work your way around the model, all the little bits of black, get that Mechanica standard grey on them. And then we'll come back and uh, I promise next time we will be on the armour. So for the armour, we're using Gullim and Flesh contrast paint. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop this into all the recesses. So a nice sharp point on your brush. And then work your way around the model, painting the Gullman flesh into all of the 
the recesses of the model. So this is probably the bit that's going to take the longest, but it is the bit that's going to give you um, the greatest bang for your buck, I guess, in terms of the effect. So take your time and enjoy it all the way around and make sure you get it into all these all these little angles on the armour all these plates as well just take your time and work your way around So once you've got all that done, we'll come back and we'll highlight the armour. So I'm going to go away and finish all this. And I'll see you on the other side of all this lightning. Once that gullum and flesh has dried, it's time to go back in with some Screaming Skull and just tidy up some of those areas um, that you may have overspilt or been a little messy on. So this is a fairly straightforward stage. Just want to take your time, make sure that you... Get it all in and blend it up nicely. There's no rush on this stage. This is just getting it to a level ready for the, the highlights. To make sure there's not too harsh a, a movement from the highlights uh, to the kind of colour underneath. So as we work our way around the model, tidy up with the Screaming Skull and we'll come back and start to highlight the armour. Once we've reached touched everything up, it's time to get some pallid witch flesh. And we're going to use this just to highlight all the edges of the armour. So where on the model you've got an edge, like on the shoulder guard there, you can just use that for these kind of bumps there. You can just highlight the, the front side of them. What you'll see is when you put it on, it might not look like there's much of a light there but as it kind of dries you'll start to see that oh actually that there is a, a decent highlight in there so what you're doing is working your way around all the armor and then where you've got a kind of separation of the joins you're just looking to work some pallid witch flesh into there so take your time this is again another one of those parts which I really enjoy because I know it's kind of coming to the end and we've not got much left. What I'll do with the crystal swords is I'll put them up in a in a separate video just to kind of save a bit of time on, on this one. Um, and stay tuned because I'll put a card up as well to to that video at the end. Okay, so work your way around the model, getting all those edges done with the pallid witch flesh, and then we'll come back and we're pretty much done with this Howling Banshee Exarch. Which have got a few more steps to go. We're really coming together now. So just as a final highlight on the armour, we're going to take some white scar, and this is just for those sharpest uh, edges. To make the armor pop a little and the other thing I want to do with the white scar as well is just detail in the eyes and the reason for this is I'm going to use some contrast paint I want the white in the middle to give that kind of glowing effect. Okay, so work your way around the model anywhere where you think, you know what, that should be, uh, that's one of the brightest parts. Pop a little bit of white scar on there and we'll come back and we'll get the eyes done and I'll show you how to paint gems. For the eyes, we're going back to Blood Angel's Red Contrast Paint. And we just want to really carefully Pop this in to those eye sockets 
and then wipe your brush off and then just pop it back against that and pull most of it away you'll see you get a bit of a nice red glow there as well if you've got any overspill just move that away with your brush there you go so let that dry and what you can do then is just go back in with a little bit of the um, pallid witch flesh just to tidy up the, the edge of the eye there so let's look at the gems so I'm just going to show you how to do the one in the middle of the helmet and I'm going to do this as a blue gem so you can do whatever colour you want just use a dark colour, a mid-tone and then a lighter version over a black base coat so the first thing I'm going to do is take Cantor Blue I'm going to start it here and we're just going to basically paint that 75% of the gem with the Cantor Blue I'm going to clean the brush off and the next blue I'm going to use is Teclis Blue so and I'm going to do probably about 50% of the gem with the techless blue and again start at the top and just working our way towards the bottom there next I'm going to use Lothan blue or Lothan blue depending on your pronunciation and I'm just going to use that to draw a thin line just on the the bottom there so that's essentially the blue parts of the gem. The next thing I'm going to do is take some white scar. We need a tiny little bit of white scar. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot here. A dot there. And that's going to give me my shine. And I'm also just going to, on the bottom here, just going to put a little bit of a very thin bit of white scar just in there. So that's how you do, or how I do gems, and it looks pretty good. So what I'd probably do is pop a little bit of gloss varnish over it just to make it reflect properly. So I'm going to work my way around the rest of the model now, and I'm going to do blue and red gems to kind of offset against the, um, the green and the bone. You can pick whatever colour you want, but I'll get that done, we'll come back, paint the base, um, and like I said, I'll do the swords in different videos, so you can watch that as well. All right, let's paint the stone on the base so for the uh, part here with the Eldari script on we're going for Carrick Stone make sure you work it into all those areas being careful not to get any of it on the rest of the model and then for the other areas the grey areas we're going to use Dawnstone I was going to show you this real quick because this is really basic. You shouldn't have too many issues with this. It's going to work the Dawnstone on there. And you may need two coats, and if you do, that's fine, it's no issue. So let's work it in and work your way around. So when I get that finished, we'll come back. If you do need to do another coat like with the Dawnstone there, then feel free, crack on, and we'll come back and we'll shade it. Once those two colours are dry, just going to take some Agrax Earth Shade. And we're gonna wash it over all of it. So I put a big lump of Agrax Earth Shade on there, and I'm gonna use that and kind of pull it around, make sure it gets into the recess parts, and then we'll put another big lump on the back. That's working out okay. What I don't want this to do is to pool anywhere. So where I see it start to pool, I'll just pull it off. And then I just want to get it right up in there, there, make sure we've got that. So there we are, I'll let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll just give that a little little highlight and make sure that we've got plenty in the recesses for that lettering or those rooms. And we'll come back and highlight that and then we'll be done. So that's mostly dry. All I'm going to do to highlight that is take some administratum grey and I'm just going to pull that along the edge there um, and the kind of the bottom there follow it up into the cracks a little again this is just really 
basic highlighting that gives you a nice kind of effect without you having to pull too much of your hair out. So just take your time and work your way around the stonework. So that's the kind of the grey stone. And then we want to get a little bit on the stone inside as well. So I'm just going to take a bit of wraith bone. Get a nice tip on your brush. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to highlight this the top edge here. Which is a nice easy one. On the bottom edge. Excuse me, flipping the model around my hand. And the other thing we can do is we can also just look to highlight some of these glyphs on here. Some nice thin lines. Take your time. Don't you don't have to do this. It can be quite frustrating. So if you don't feel up to it, don't worry about it too much. There we are, that is the base of the Howling Banshee done. So I'll just throw some Steel Legion drab around the bottom. Um, I'll pop some, maybe some Astro Granite on, onto the base there. Um, and that'll be done. So in terms of the swords, I'll do them as a different video and I'll pop a card to them uh, at the top right hand of the screen that you should be able to see now. And that'll be the model complete. So there we have it, this Howling Banshee Autark is finished. Now it was a lot fiddlier than I thought it was going in. Uh, but I think she's turned out pretty good. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, then please leave a like and a comment down below. And if you want to support the channel, then I really, really appreciate you using some of those links in the description. Um, they are affiliate links, which means I get a small kickback, but it doesn't actually cost you any more money. So even if you're just doing your normal Amazon shop that you get, then just use the link because it does help the channel. It does support me. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I really hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one.